there's a 50% chance, greater than 50% chance that she's going to lose her uterus. There's a 10% chance that she will develop sepsis and herself die. That weighs on me. I voted for that bill. These are affecting people, and we're having a meeting about this. It took that whole week I did not sleep. Some of you may remember that viral speech by South Carolina State Representative Neil Collins, who was a Republican that expressed regret after he voted for an anti-abortion bill. Now, the reason why we're talking about him again is because I have an update to that particular story. So after he vocalized regret and claimed that his vote kept him up at night, did he choose to pen legislation to undo the damage that he caused? Well, no, unfortunately, he did it again. He voted for another anti-abortion bill. I am not joking about this. So he penned a very lengthy Facebook post. And in it, he talks about a particular bill that he ended up voting for that bans abortion. He explains, for all the above reasons, after hundreds of discussions, hours of thought and prayer, I could not vote for a bill that requires a 12-year-old rape victim to carry. I voted against that bill. That bill failed 47 to 55. I understand I will upset the segment who want a full ban without exceptions. The bill was then moved for reconsideration in which rape and incest exceptions up to 12 weeks were put in. Child support for fathers from date of conception and other cleanup language. The bill protects contraception. IVF, and clearly lists conditions in which mother's life is at risk, hopefully eliminating the 19-year-old situation. We'll talk about that more in a minute. No other amendments passed or would have passed. Criminality on doctors stayed in, which the majority of my constituents approved, but I personally did not. Since exceptions were put in, I voted for the second bill. It passed 67 to 38. I understand I will upset the segment who did not want anything to pass. I knew at the end no one would cheer a nuanced position. Oh, please. I fully understand the comments are about to be all negative. It's why I led off with something more important than this issue, where we receive our information, how we communicate with each other, and can we return to being a community that knows one another, or do we just tweet insults at one another? I'm trying to do my part to the best of my ability. With that, I'm now humbly your punching bag. So he's trying to portray himself as the victim. Well, I am humbly your punching bag. I'm just doing what I believe is right after speaking with a lot of people. You voted for a ban on abortions at the 12 week mark that also would criminalize doctors who perform abortions or who are accused of performing abortions on live fetuses. You learned nothing. You learned absolutely nothing. And he thinks that this bill is reasonable because of the exceptions, but it's not actually. As Jezebel explains, yes, the bill lists miscarriage as one of the several medical conditions that pose a clear risk of death to the pregnant person, but hospitals will still be managing their legal risk for doctors who could be criminally charged for violating the law if it passes and takes effect. Who's to say that hospitals won't delay care for people miscarrying until they're showing signs of infection? And Collins cannot claim that this bill won't force rape survivors, especially child survivors, to carry pregnancies to term. Girls can get their first period and be capable of getting pregnant anywhere from ages 8 to 14, but they may not know the signs of pregnancy. Combine that fact with shame and stigma, and rape survivors may not tell their parents or caretakers they're pregnant until they're much further along than 12 weeks. Exactly. We've talked about these stories on this program where doctors were afraid to do procedures that are effectively abortions on women who had miscarriages because they don't want to be accused of performing an abortion on live fetuses. And he acts as if this bill is reasonable and he made a nuanced decision when you're still saying that the victims of rape are forced to carry their rapist baby to term after the 12-week mark. But yet this is supposed to be applauded because you made a nuanced decision. You talked to a lot of people, literally hundreds of people, agonized over this, you know, for days, spent hours in prayer, but yet you still come out doing the same fucking thing that you expressed regret over just a week or so ago? What is wrong with you? See, this is why I say time and again, you can't reason with forced birthers, because even if they're honest for a second and they admit that what they did was wrong— it's very easy for them to fall back into that trap because they're just not operating with facts 
and data. Sure, he tried. You can give him credit for talking to people. He consulted with his constituents, presumably, but he's not talking to doctors. He's not talking to women who will be affected by this very clearly. Otherwise, he would have changed his mind. And he shared some of the messages that he received, presumably from his constituents. But, you know, since he went viral, I'm sure that people from around the country reached out to him. Um, and I don't know why he shared these. Perhaps he's sharing this to make it seem as if he's the victim of some sort of a hate campaign. But really what he shared doesn't prove his point. It proves the point of the women who are outraged that he's not listening to them. So let's take a look at some of these texts that he shared. Your crocodile tears are too little too late. You should have listened to women. Another one says, are you able to sleep at night? Your vote hurts more than it helps. You should have listened to the majority of Americans. Your fake tears mean nothing. You know the saying, a day late, a dollar short? You fell short. You stole the future of a 19-year-old with your decision to listen to your beliefs. And the last text here is kind of hard to see, but it's of a woman telling him that she would have died without an abortion. Now, moving on, he shared this text, but forgot to black out their number, so I did. Hopefully, that's just a mistake, and he wasn't intentionally sharing this person's number. Uh, but this person shared an image saying, photo of the exact moment when pro-life Republicans Republicans stop giving a fuck about you as a human being. And then this person claims that his daughter is going to be saddened to learn that her father used his political career to, you know, uh, subjugate women to second class citizenship status. I'm paraphrasing, but you can read it if you want to. Now, this woman explains to him how he personally put that 19 year old woman in that situation and he shouldn't be able to sleep ever. And you know what? She's right about that. Now, here's another Facebook post from a woman who is rightfully angry, explaining to him that he was told by millions that the bill that he supported was going to kill women, but yet he did it anyway. And she's calling him names, but she's angry because he very much did endanger the lives of women in his state. Now, he also shared posts that people sent him, which were too mean, like his father just passed away recently. And so they're saying, your father is in hell and you're going to join him and something like that. Like, those are mean. Those, those are wrong right? But for him to share those messages from women where they're justifiably outraged, I'm not sure, again, if he wants to portray himself as the victim. But what they're saying, yeah, you should have listened to them because, again, you endangered women's lives and you didn't learn your lesson. You did it again. So how can you expect people to applaud you for this supposedly nuanced position when you claim that your anti-abortion vote endangered the lives of women, but then you voted for a bill that is going to do the same exact thing? Now, if you don't remember specifically what he said, he talks about how the 19-year-old girl um, that he learned about her life was in danger because of the anti-abortion bill that he supported. Let's watch that one more time to refresh our memories. I voted for the pain capable bill, the fetal heartbeat bill, and fetal heartbeat has been for six weeks now. The second week that this, that the fetal heartbeat bill became law, a doctor called me out of Anderson. I live in Easley. A 19 year old girl appeared at the ER. She was 15 weeks pregnant. Her water broke. And the, the fetus was unviable. The standard of care was to advise her uh, that they could extract or she could go home. The attorneys told the doctors that because of the fetal heartbeat bill, because that 15 week old had a heartbeat, the doctors could not extract. So their only choices were to admit the 19 year old until that fetal heartbeat stopped. I asked, how long does it take to stop? She said, seconds, minutes, hours, maybe days, or discharge. They discharged that 19 year old. The doctor told me at that point, there's a 50% chance, well first, she's gonna pass this fetus in the toilet. She's gonna to have to deal with that on her own. There's a 50% chance, greater than 50% chance that she's going to lose her uterus. There's a 10% chance that she will develop sepsis and herself die. That weighs on me. I voted for that bill. These are affecting people, and we're having a meeting about this. It took that whole week. I did not sleep. Yeah. So when that exact same thing happens again because of this bill that you supported, are you going to come out and apologize once again and claim that, you know, you couldn't sleep at night because of the predicament that you put women in with your vote? 
only to uh, once again backtrack and support an anti-abortion bill after that. I mean, look, to be to be fair to him, if he didn't support this, the bill still would have passed because it was voted overwhelmingly in favor, you know, by this Republican controlled legislature. But still, to make this bold statement saying that you felt regret over the bill that you supported only to do the same thing. I mean, look, I applaud people for having a change of heart. I don't want to shame people for being wrong if they change their mind. But you don't get credit if you claim that you did a wrong thing, but then you repeat that same mistake. You get credit when you learn from your mistake. If you introduce legislation to undo the damage that you caused with that vote, then you'd get credit. But this is why many people were skeptical of you when your speech went viral. Because even though people like myself gave you credit for admitting that you were wrong, still, what really matters, the way that you measure if you feel bad, is changing the laws, introducing legislation, fighting on behalf of people who believe women should control their own bodies. But you didn't do that. You went in the opposite direction. So again, when you learn that your bill, that your vote for this legislation endangered more women, we told you so. And you very clearly didn't learn your lesson. So perhaps, you know, people in your district, they need someone who's a little bit more decisive and actually knows the effect that their votes will have on their constituents because this isn't no simple matter this is a matter of life and death literally and the way that you express regret but then do the same fucking thing is truly gross and embarrassing you should be embarrassed neil collins when you acting like a beta 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 beta